I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to try to recreate a leave no dye behind colorway. The color we ended up with was a bit of a brown with some rainbow speckles in it. Yes, we muddied the colors together, but the resulting color was stunning and is one that has been in my head ever since uh, we did that color and I've wanted to try to recreate it. The color came after the Hanukkah Oops Evil Fairy colorway from 2018, where we had a lot of our primary colors on the counter, and then we wiped them up to create this magic. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to recreate this, especially in terms of the level of pigment and saturation, but we're gonna try. <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by Daryl. Daryl, thank you so much for sponsoring this video. If you would like to learn more how you as a viewer can sponsor an episode of Dye Pot Weekly, get some of the yarn that I dye in the process and shout outs, uh, you can find a link to the listing in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop in the video description and in that little eye symbol that's in the top right corner of the screen. And yes, I'm hesitating because when I'm pointing there, I don't know which side of the screen I'm actually pointing to with you guys. Uh, yes, I am a dork. <laughs> Today we are going to use the exact same colors that I used when I was trying to leave no dye behind. We've got Dharma Fire Engine Red, Brilliant Yellow, and Peacock Blue. And we will be finger painting a little bit on the surface to get the colors sort of spread out and ready for us to add the yarn. Uh, so that way we can try to soak up this color in this random way. We are going to dye 200 grams of yarn for Daryl. This yarn is Knit Picks Swish DK. It is 100% Superwash Merino, and it's the same yarn base that I used in that Leave No Dye Behind. The only difference is here we've got two skeins, and back then we only used one. Now, this is pre-soaked in water for a little bit, but honestly, I don't know how much vinegar to add. I don't know how much vinegar I had before. So we're gonna go a little random and I'm gonna use approximately an eighth of a cup of white vinegar. And we'll just let this sit in the now acidic water for a minute or two uh, while, oh dear, while we are getting ready to dye our yarn. The first step, it's honestly to make sure our countertop is a little damp. I've got the yarn here and honestly from filming the scene in the pan we spilled a little bit of water on here. So it is damp as though I had yarn on here that I was speckling before. But we will be setting this yarn aside until we're ready to start mopping up the colors that we will leave here on the surface. This feels so weird and somewhat wrong to me. I'm now wearing gloves, a respirator, and safety glasses, and I have some dry spoons that I'm going to use for each of these colors to take out, oh that's a lot, take out a tiny bit of dye onto our countertop. So we've got the red and the blue. This could be way too much dye. I don't even know, I think the little spots where I've put it right now are barely on camera. And I'll shift so that way you can see that a bit better. There we go. And now, I mean, this is gonna feel a little weird, but I am sort of speckling the counter and just sort of, not just speckling, but also somewhat finger painting. So it's like I had speckled some yarn, but the powders aren't all like completely dry. I'm definitely in a smaller surface area than I might have been. This doesn't look like that much color to me. I think I need to go a little heavier. Maybe it's not damp enough. Uh, let's add 
going into the pre-soaked water and I wet my other glove. Oh dear. <laughs> we are finger painting and making some mud. But that is okay. This does not look anything like the surface did. And I think the hardest part is that my gloves are legit covered. And okay, we're going to go in. I'm going to try to leave like those piles as they are. But yeah, so first steps first. I need to sort of wash my gloves <laughs> uh, because I don't want to leave that color behind. And yeah, now we're sort of just going in. And oh dear, you know how I said I wasn't going to dip in over there? And then I totally did. Whoops. But so far, I mean, the issue is going to be the proportions, right? And that other time, we definitely did it multiple times. I might need to go in for some more dye. Uh, I mean, what we've got so far is earthy and fun. I'm not necessarily seeing any speckles, but I think that could be because I have been essentially finger painting this versus having the colors really be organically laid. And so if the colors are sort of or more organically put down and then I plop the yarn onto it, then we might start to see some more speckles in there. One of the goals of this, and the, one of the things I loved about that video, is that mud can be beautiful. And a lot of times you worry about not mudding. Ooh, yeah, and you can squeeze, spread these colors through. So there's a lot of times when you might be worried about mud and look at that muddy brown color coming out Oof. but mud can be beautiful mud can be unique mud can be mud can be desirable okay so i'm looking for sections that i feel like need more color oh that's looking pretty let's wipe it up <laughs> Oh my gosh, uh, this is not really turning out <laughs> like I had expected, but I'm also okay with it. Oh, well, maybe we'll, we'll see what it looks like in the end as like we go through. I'm curious how similar these will feel to one another. Um, I thought that I would be able to do it like side by side a little bit more than I am in actuality. Uh, gosh, I mean, this is, this is definitely, it's definitely different. Like I'm feeling the colors are muddying together, but I'm feeling the pigments more in their true form then I'm feeling like a brown, if that makes sense. Okay, let's go. This is really, really fun. I don't know if you guys are into finger painting at all. This I think is actually really beautiful on its own and I am living for it. Oh my goodness. Okay, where do I feel like I need some color? Let's move that tie down. Let's pop you there. And how about you, skein two. We can worry about tangling and detangling Later, I'm sort of going in and patting 
with different areas that feel like they need more color. And it might end up feeling more brown the more that we, we do this. Uh, this one's a little tangled, but if, if you start getting your skin tangled, and Daryl, I will make sure that it is detangled for you, I promise. If your yarn starts to feel tangled, it's always easier to detangle when it's dry versus when it is wet. Uh, so I hope that that sort of makes sense and helps. Okay, uh, I'm not sure how similar these feel. I'm going in with these spoons now. Wiping off some of the excess color and balling everything up and squeezing it out, kind of combining these colors that we have in here, but huh, this was a lot of fun. Next, we need to prepare to go steam set it, but I do want to make sure that I wipe up the counter well around it to make sure I won't have dye that I'm going to like accidentally move around my kitchen. The colors are muddy, but they aren't. I'm surprised how unbrown it is. I feel like I used a pretty even mix of the colors, but this feels like a muddy rainbow. Not quite like a brown rainbow, which honestly was a little bit what I was going for. But I think what I didn't achieve today was the more random mix of the colors. And I'll make sure to insert an image of what the countertop really looked like in that video. And that sort of powder all over the surface from where it sort of went through the yarn that I was speckling. That's something that is not easy to achieve just randomly. And I definitely didn't want to go with too, too much color and go into evil fairy like territory. But there's something that is still fun about this. And I am really happy. I don't think I've tried wiping the counter like this with two full skeins before. But anyway, now we need to go and steam set the yarn. I am bringing our 200 grams of yarn. Don't forget we do have acid in here. Placing it, just as is, in the steamer basket. And I'm gonna let this steam for 30 minutes. The 30 minutes are up so we can turn off the heat, carefully remove the lid, and then we will Wait for the yarn to cool a little bit before we remove it. This yarn is fun. I do see a few subtle speckles, but I'm really, really, really excited to see what it's gonna look like dry and to take that closer look. But first, I'm gonna let everything finish cooling off. Ooh, Daryl, this yarn is beautiful. Right now, you can really see the difference between the two skeins. This one feels a little more brown. This one feels a little bit more like a muted rainbow. I mean, just look at those blue and red speckles on that multicolored base. There is elements of the blended quality in both of these skeins. This one has a lot more green and distinct red, but this one has some of that red and blue in there as well. There are definitely differences, even though they are the same colorway, these were dyed together at the same time. And so depending on the type of project that these are gonna become, whether woven, crocheted, or knit, I would either recommend alternating skeins every couple of rounds, or somehow blending them together at the transition um, so then maybe you can get something that's a little more of a fade or some subtle kind of gradient between the two. This is absolutely not the same colorway that we created in December 2018. But even though we use the same colors, I still think that this colorway 
is extremely pretty and beautiful. It doesn't feel brown, it does feel more like a muted rainbow to me. This goes to show that some of my leave no dye yarn mop techniques are easy for me to intentionally replicate and others I can do the same technique with the same colors and things will turn out slightly different. Now I think that if I were to do this again I could create a colorway similar to this one today and I'm very very intrigued that even with all this rubbing and mixing we did not completely blend all the colors together. Are these colors quote muddier? Yeah, we started with vibrant primaries and we added a blend to them that made them much more muted and less loud. But that also shows the power of color mixing and how you can achieve so many different tones if you combine primaries together. I think that rather than the yellow, blue, and green, you would likely probably want to start with like a cyan, magenta, and yellow if you wanted to have three colors to mix a complete palette, maybe with a black thrown in there, but you definitely can do a lot with the primary colors without relying on premixed colors. That being said, I love premixed colors. Uh, I like using them for speckling and using them dry, so I definitely see the value in having a wide range of premixed colors at your disposal. But just because that's what I like to use doesn't mean it's what you have to use. Once again, I would like to thank today's viewer sponsor, Daryl, for sponsoring this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I really hope that you will enjoy this yarn. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you love my content, make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on so you never miss a new video. I publish at least two new yarn dyeing videos every single week, plus we do a lot of unboxings and other fun content. And you really aren't going to want to miss this Friday's video because I'm going to play with these primary colors in a few other techniques. If you're already a subscriber and want to help support the content on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, head over to the Chemnitz Patreon. Patreon is a great platform that connects viewers with the content creators they really enjoy, and it's a way that you can support and subscribe on a monthly basis and get some really cool perks in return. These perks include early access to the Dye Pop PS series, behind the scenes sneak peeks, and more. You can find all details about the Patreon in the video description and in the card in the top right corner. I would say let me know in the comments if you want me to play around more with mixing and blending colors, but I already know the answer. I know that you guys would love to see more of that. Uh, it's something that I would like to do more of as well. I don't consider color mixing a strength of mine, but I'm willing to learn and experiment. And I think this technique today is a fun way to randomly blend some colors together and see what happens. Ooh, could this be a candidate for a mystery surprise dialogue? Maybe. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.